we're back. All right, we got our rubber hose on this side. Now I'm gonna put that back in there. So I can get it to line up. Okay. There we go. Now I've also put a little piece of hook and loop around here for the receiver. Now before I mount the receiver on that. I'm going to put a little bit of CA, thin CA, just on the edges. Here's all you need, just a, just a little bit to hold that in place. Well, you can always get it out if need be later on. Uh, pretty easy if you don't put a whole lot of glue on it. All right, let me put my pen back in here. I can. I well, can't get it in there. It's all plugged up. Oh, good grief. There we go. Okay. All right. I did get some glue on my fingers. I'm going to take my little sanding block, sand my fingers again. Okay, now uh, you got the servo block, I mean not servo block, uh, receiver block that I made. We're going to put a little piece of foam. I get this from the hobby shop. And so it comes in a big old sheet. You can cut it however you want. Uh, I'm actually, I think I'm going to do two pieces of that, two thicknesses put underneath it. So, sometimes you, some people wrap their receivers completely up and you can do that but basically you just need something to protect it from vibration underneath there so uh, we are going to put that right there mm, that little antenna is going to hit let's see here let's do this Oh, that ain't gonna work. Well, got a little problem with my antenna here. I got, it's gonna hit on that. Whoops. Let me just put that on here first and see what we can come up with. Okay. Got our receiver strapped in place. We'll cut the excess of that off, which you don't need. Um, hmm. The only problem I have is the little short antenna is hitting this wood right here, so I need to probably cut out a notch for that or drill a hole. So we're going to slide that over out of the way. And uh, let me see if I can get in there. Doesn't need to be a very big hole. Let me get a smaller drill bit. Okay, we're going to scoot that over to here. There again, I'll see if I can do this by hand. I think I can in this piece. Yeah, it's going. Okay. Alright, now. Uh, I'm going to have to undo the receiver. Back it up, poke my antenna through that little hole, and get my Velcro back over here. Squish her down good. And we'll slide that over where that antenna is sticking out that little hole. And get in here. Well, I didn't get the hole over far enough. <laughs> Let me drill another one here. I don't want to do my drill bit. Ah, come on. Let's go this way a little bit more. do with your fingers. Okay, got another hole. The shavings out of the way. Let's move our foam back over here in the middle. Uh, run our antenna through the hole. Push the receiver up there. The reason we want it over here is because we want this strap in the middle of the receiver. Okay.
Doggone it. What's going on here? Is it the wrong one? Get my phone lined up again. We'll get it here in a minute. Get my antenna in the little hole I made. Okay. Now, the receiver's nice and secure. We'll we'll tie these wires up here in just a minute and get them out of the way. Um, we've got our antenna, our little short antenna sticking out right here. Now what we're going to do, uh, we'll hang on just a minute, let me get some tubing. Get in here. Get you a package of uh, shrink wrap, or heat shrink. That, you know, um, See, I need a full length. I'm going to use a green. I usually use a little bit smaller than this. Get you some uh, heat shrink. And uh, it works great to run your antenna through. And we will run it. Let's see here. We run it up under here. Keep it away from our servos and stuff. So we're going to run that antenna, the long one, through here. I managed to get it that far. Alright, come on. Well, good grief. Alright. Let's do this. Let's run the antenna under here first. Very carefully get a hold of it with a pair of tweezers. You don't want to break this off or bend it. Don't ever cut your antenna, whatever you do. That's a big no-no. It will delete your signal big time. And we're going to run this tubing all the way up against the receiver. So it will protect, protect that wire. Alright, we got it all the way up against the receiver. We're going to run the end of it back through the fuselage here. It just needs to be this long antenna needs to be at a 90 degree away from this one. So right now what we've got, this one's pointing forward and that one's pointing back. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to wrap it around over here. Here in just a second. Let me see if I've got enough. It's not too long to do that. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm not liking what i got here. Uh, all right, let's go this route. Let's take it under here, around this side. And I'm pinching the green tubing with my tweezers. I'm not, I'm not getting a hold of the wire itself. Okay, we're going to run that over there. Get it out of the way of our servo wire. We're going to push it back up against the receiver. Okay. Now what we're going to do, get my CA again. Should have just left it unstopped, I guess. I'm having a hard time getting this pin out of here. I may have to put a new tip on it here in a minute. There we go. All right, I'm going to take my tweezers. And I'm going to feed that back up on here. I'm going to run it over to this corner. And I'm going to put a little CA around it right there. Let that set. Don't get it on your finger. Just the tube, not the antenna. Because you want your antenna to pull out of this. If you have a crash, you got your antenna glued down or taped down. A lot of times I had one ripped out of a receiver. Unfortunately, you can buy a new antenna for about 12 bucks for this. But if you put it in this tubing, if you do have a crash and it manages to crash bad enough to throw your receiver out... Uh, then it will just pull your antenna out of this little tube and it won't you won't lose it okay now we are going to glue it back here I don't know if you can see this or not but I'm going to hold it back here with my tweezers glue the tube along that side and then what I'm going to do Cut this off. Let 
This is real, real light ply. Doesn't weigh nothing, no bigger than this piece is. So we'll sand the edges off. I am going to stick that down under here. And I'm going to glue it right behind these servos. And it'll give me a, a little piece of wood across there to glue my antenna on across. That way, I, what I have is I have one antenna tip facing to the side of the plane and one facing forward. They just need to be at a 90, whatever, however you do it on these JR Spectrums. You need a 90 degree, one facing away from the other one and get them as far away from each other as you can. All right, now, you know, depending on my battery, I may end up wishing I hadn't done that. I may have to take this back out, but I have a feeling we're going to put the battery in the back. Okay, now I've got a little wood tray there for that tube to glue to. There we go. We've got our antenna running from the receiver out through the tubing and down the side of the plane and then back across here. So it's it's facing to the side of the plane and then the front one's facing forward. So, Okay, now we've got that done. Um, Let's uh, let me get some little zip ties here. A bunch of them. These are handy. Can't can't have enough of them around. Um, I am going to have to make a couple of little short leads to plug my ailerons into some extensions. I'll do that here in a little bit, and we'll put them on here. But for right now, let's go ahead and see what we can do as far as getting this stuff tied up out of the way. So we're going to do one and kind of bend these, crimp them a little bit and that makes it easier to feed around a, in a circle. Crimp them like that and then you got a U shape. So we're going to go underneath all of them. I'll get my tweezers, get a hold of this end of it. And we're going to Sense that end of the little wad down together. Take our wire cutters, cut that off. Now we're going to put another one right here around all this one. And what that'll do, that just keeps him all nice and neat from flopping around and getting tangled up in your. Uh, uh, servo horns and stuff. You, you don't want your wires to rub anything that moves so it doesn't chafe them. And the wing is going to clear that. They're down low enough that the wing's not going to hit them. So we're fine there. Now I will put my two little leads in here and then we'll fasten them up here toward the front. Okay, we are ready to put the wing on it and balance it. See where we're going to have to put our battery. Uh, we'll get the battery. I'm going to run a 6 volt battery system in this. It's a Hydromax uh, 2000 milliamp hour six volt battery which makes these particular servos 57 ounce torque uh, if you run them on 4.8 I think they're only four points I mean uh, 47 or 48 ounce but we're gonna run 57 ounce torque on here now one thing I want to remember is put my throttle back and I'm gonna turn it on to plug it back up here make sure I've got it in the right spot before I actually uh, screw that in Okay, that's down. Yeah, we're off a notch, so I need to turn it more forward. There we go. That's back where it goes. All right, now we will put our screw back in our servo horn before we forget it. If you lose a throttle in there, it's not too bad. You can actually manage to land one. But you don't want to lose one of them off your elevator or rudder, you'd really be in trouble. So, okay, and we got throttle servo working. Uh, we've got uh, elevator and rudder and steering all working. So, okay, we're going to unhook this now, turn the power off, turn the radio off, and I'll move my camera here in a minute. We're going to unhook it, put the wing on it, and figure out where this thing balances at. And then we'll have to mount the battery in it. I'll have to go back in here and build a little tray or something to hold the battery. I'm going to use a bigger battery in this one. But I may end up having to cut a hole back toward the back. I don't know yet. We'll find out here in a minute. Okay. Uh, center of gravity in the book is three and three quarter. 
we take two rulers, uh, stick one in front of your wing, and lay the other one on there, have somebody hold it if they need to, take a marker and mark your point, and then cut you uh, two little strips of, of uh, uh, masking tape and put on your lines, and that's where you put your fingers. I do have a plane bouncer, but be honest, most of the time I like doing it with my, my fingers, so... Let me see if I can get this turned over here without knocking the camera off. And we'll see if we're even close. I, I haven't put the battery in it yet, but that's what I was afraid of. It's going to be real nose heavy. Now, uh, let me go get my battery. It's in this box right here. All my goodies out of the way here. Put that over here. Okay. Now, my brand new Hydromax battery. 2000 milliamp hour. It'll do several flights on this plane. Okay. Now, it's already nose heavy, so we know the front compartment's not going to work. I have a compartment right here that I could put it in. So, let me get a piece of. Uh, in that tape drawer uh, right here. My sticky, double sided sticky stuff. We'll put a piece on here just to hold the battery so it doesn't fly, slide off the plane when I pick it up. Be sure and turn your ceiling fans off. Uh, you don't want any air movement across this when you're checking it. Okay, now we know the compartment is right here where those are. Now the only thing is, nine times out of ten, this engine sticking straight up, it's going to be heavy to the right side most likely. So I'm going to stick this kind of over to the left side and try that. All right, now we'll pick it back up, find my tape. Jason, can you pull that cord off of that? Okay, we're still a little bit nose heavy. A nose heavy plane will handle in the air real good and maneuver good. The only problem you're going to have with that is it's going to be harder to land because the nose is hard to keep tipped up. So you're going to you're going to have to fly it in a little harder. So you want it balanced pretty accurate. Now, a tail heavy plane is terrible to fly. If it's slightly tail heavy, it'll land a lot easier, but it's not quite as maneuverable in the air. Uh, but if you're real tail heavy, it's it's like a sack of rocks tied on the back of the dead gum thing, and you uh, boy you can't hardly control it. Okay, we're gonna move the battery on back. Um, we're gonna have to end up cutting a hole in the belly, like I thought. Even though we moved the engine back a half an inch, it's still that's oh that's a little too much. Oh that's st sticky. Should have just used tape, I guess. Uh, Jason, that drawer, there's a, a little bitty round roll. Here it is, that roll right there. This little, little yeah, that one, that's double sided. Let's do this. Maybe it won't stick as bad. We're going to pull the covering off this thing. I'm trying to. But I want to use tape so it doesn't move on me. So I can tell just about where I want it. And then I'll mark that. And then we'll, we'll have to go into the bottom of the plane, cut a hole in the belly, patch it in, and. Uh, Recover. Okay, I'll try this. Oh, looky there. That is absolutely perfect right there. We don't have a sway one way or the other. So there's where I want my battery. Just behind the uh, bolts to the wing. So uh, I don't think I can get to that from inside. I'm going to look, but chances are I'm going to have to cut a hole in the bottom of the fuselage and, and build me a little bracket to mount it in. So we'll be back when we do that. Okay. Um, we did have to cut a hole in the belly. I couldn't get to it from the inside, so we put the battery. It had center gravity. It wanted lined up perfect right here where this white stripe is. So I just cut the belly out, uh, and we'll put that back in there. And I put a little brace to glue it to. We'll glue that back in. I'll put a piece of covering over it, and if we ever need to get in there, we'll just have to cut it again. But I, I took a little piece of thin ply like that. Uh, cut it down a little bit. 
measured it to fit inside the wall there and I put velcro straps around it to, and padding to cinch the battery down and then we glued that to the inside so I can get in there and undo that velcro and change that battery at a later date if I need to so anyway we're waiting on the glue to dry now real good and then we'll put the piece back in it and then all we need to do is put a little piece of covering over it and uh, 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 set the throws and we're ready to go so tomorrow night we're going to give her a try so I'll be back as soon as this is done okay uh, we've got our battery installed got our piece of wood back in and our patch on the bottom uh, while I was waiting on that I made my extensions for my uh, ailerons I will install them right now I always do, this is just my little habit, I do yellow for the right and a different color for the left. Whether it be um, green or blue or red or whatever. But anyway, let me get these in here. I think it's it. Yeah. Okay, we'll lay those right down there. And all we gotta do is set the throws. And we are ready to fly. I'll recheck the balance here in just a minute. But uh, first we're gonna, we're gonna stick the wing on it, make sure our ailerons work right. Okay, right. put some safety clips on it before I fly it but I'm just gonna hook it up for now so I can set all this what is going on here light to light okay there we go got her the wires up here out of the way Get my screws. There's one of them, two of them. And my drill. Be careful not to over tighten these with a drill. You can bust your spar right out of there that your blind nuts are in. But it sure is a handy way to run them down real quick. Put it on low speed. Don't get too carried away. fan off. I still got my tape on the bottom. Let's see. Oh look at that. It's rocking just perfect right dead center. All right and the lateral was good so we're ready to go. Okay uh, we're all done with the Big Stick 40. Uh, I'm up with my own little color trim scheme. I think it looks pretty sharp. See what it looks like in the air. Uh, everything's balanced. Everything's a go. We've tested it two or three times. It's ready. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you can learn something from this. Uh, I've tried to cover all the key points the best I can. I'll hopefully get better as we go. But uh, anyway, if there's anything I can help you with or have any questions, feel free to contact me uh, through the personal message. So anyway, uh, happy flying to you all. We'll see you at the field for the test flight tomorrow. Call me.